What is up everyone, my name is Jack Sapple, back again with another video and today I'm here with my NXT TakeOver UK Blackpool review. I know I got that mixed up, but whatever. Um, it took place last week in Blackpool, England. It was NXT UK's first ever TakeOver event and honestly, this was a great way to kick things off if this is their first UK TakeOver special. Um, I'm really excited, man, to see where the UK division's going to go. Uh, going forward from this uh, takeover event, but um, yeah, if this is going to be a sign of things to come, then NXT UK is definitely a brand to watch for in 2019. So we opened up the show with the UK tag team titles. It was uh, Mustache Mountain taking on Drake and Gibson. Uh, this was part of a tournament to decide uh, who would be the first ever NXT UK tag team champions. So. Um, this was, in my opinion, the best match on the show. This was an excellent opening match. Just Tyler Bate just shocking everyone with just how strong he really is. Like, you look at a guy like Tyler Bate, like Tyler Bate, and you don't really think, oh, yeah, he'd be a strong guy. But, man, the stuff he was doing, like, he was delivering a double airplane spin to both Drake and Gibson and and all that stuff. Like, there was an exploded suplex off the apron onto uh, Gibson outside. And uh, he hit a shooting star off of the apron. Uh, Drake hit the Helter Skelter from the top and then Trent kicked out. Uh, Gibson at one point locks in Shackley Gates on Trent. And uh, Drake does the same thing with Tyler, but he breaks it by, fro by throwing Drake onto Gibson. So that just shows you the strength that Tyler Bate really has. Uh, Zach Gibson had Tyler Bate on his shoulders, and then James hit an outside dive on Tyler. And then Drake and Gibson hit a uh, ticket to Mayhem to win the titles. Uh, this was, yeah, just an incredible match to open up uh, the show. And... Um, yeah, it reminds me a lot of the first ever NXT special uh, back in 2014 between Sami Zayn and Cesaro. It was the very first match uh, of the very first uh, NXT special on the WWE Network. And how fitting that the very first match on the first ever NXT UK special would just be an excellent showing with, uh, with Mustache Mountain, who have obviously been NXT champions before, and uh, the team of James Drake and Zach Gibson, which... Uh, have only been around since the UK Tag Team Tournament has kind of started, but I'm really excited what they're going to do with them as Tag Team Champions. Zach Gibson is such a good fucking heel. Like, every time he comes out, the crowd just absolutely drowns him with booze. Like, even the some funny chants like, if you hate Zach Gibson, take your shoes off and stuff like that, which, by the way, the UK crowds are nuts. But they are... They can come up with some of the most creative shit ever, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see uh, James Drake and Zach Gibson as NXT UK Tag Team Champions, and I think they're going to have a good run with those belts. And then afterwards, we had Travis Banks versus Jordan Devlin, and uh, these two have had a bit of a heated feud recently on uh, NXT UK. Uh, Banks was attacked earlier in the day by Devlin, uh, injuring his left knee. And then uh, Travis tried to hit an outside dive before the bell rings, but uh, Devlin throws him into the ring steps, and uh, basically the match is called off and doesn't take place. And he just continues to work on Travis Banks' injured legs, and it pretty much takes him out for the night. So then Jordan Devlin grabs the microphone and says, you know, since I have no opponent tonight, I'll just interview myself then. And then the general managers of NXT UK... Uh, come out and said, uh, we'd have a feeling you'd do something like this to Travis Banks. And so we have a backup for you just in case the situation happens. And it turns out to be Finn fucking Balor. Yes, the man who will be facing Brock Lesnar for the Universal title at the Royal Rumble uh, ended up facing Jordan Devlin. Now, obviously, this match took place before the, he became number one contender. Um, but, uh, yeah, what a pop for Finn Balor. I think this really opened up, uh, Vince's ears and realized, oh shit, people really like this Finn Balor guy. And it's not hard to see why. He's got a great physique, uh, very talented inside the ring, and he can really connect with the fans, uh, very well. So I'm really glad that Finn Balor, uh, ended up winning this match. He beat Jordan Devlin, hit the coup de grace, and did his 
typical stuff. Uh, it was a very entertaining match, and it made a lot of sense as well, because I think Finn Balor trained Jordan Devlin, and uh, obviously this was about to see, oh, who's the top wrestler in Ireland and stuff like that, which was... Uh, not a big uh, story, but it was a little story there. There was a bit of connection with it, which was good. But yeah, Finn Balor won the match, and uh, after that, on Raw, he uh, replaced Braun Strowman in the Universal Title match at the Royal Rumble. Hopefully he brings back the Demon, but I'm not sure if he's going to win. I'll get to that more when I release my predictions videos sometime next week. Uh, and afterwards, we get a no disqualification match between Eddie Dennis and Dave Mastiff. Mastiff. Uh, Eddie Dennis is this really tall, is this pretty tall guy. He's got like a crazy look to him. And basically, he wants to be the big monster of NXT UK. And then there's this Dave Mastiff guy who he's a, he's a big unit, definitely, uh, for sure. Uh, because Eddie's a lot more tall and lean, while um, Dave Mastiff's a little bit shorter, but like big on the weight and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, this was a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid no DQ match. Uh, Eddie hit Dave with a kendo stick, and then he also slammed Dave Mastiff onto the steel steps and hit a razor's edge on him. Uh, Dave even hit a rolling fireman's carry on the floor and a running senton, which was great. Um, but Dave Mastiff hits a running can cannonball on Eddie Dennis through a table to win the match and in convincing fashion. So, uh... Yeah, Dave Mastiff winning that after seeing that. I feel like he's going to do a lot for NXT UK. It's nice to see, like, everyone. It's nice to see someone a little bit different in NXT UK. And I feel like Dave Mastiff will definitely add something. Along with Eddie Dennis. I feel like Eddie Dennis can do a lot as a great creepy heel. So I'm really excited to see where these two guys go in the future. And then we get to the NXT UK Women's Championship match between Rhea Ripley and Tony Storm. Uh, this was a great women's match. Uh, these two girls, obviously, you could tell they had a lot of um, a lot of chemistry between the two. Uh, in the build-up for this, I think Tony Storm won a tournament uh, to face Rhea Ripley for the championship, or they already had a match to decide the first ever NXT UK Women's Champion, which Rhea Ripley did win. And obviously, she's just been on a tear throughout the women's division in the UK scene. And uh, because it's weird, because both of them have similarities. They're both from Australia. Um, they both have like rock metal like personas. Like Tony Storm seems to be more on the Motley Crue hair metal kind of side, while Rhea Ripley seems to be more of like like traditional like heavy metal and stuff like that. Which I, I, I guess it's, it's a cool little clash of styles, but with a bit of similarity. Obviously, uh, Tony Storm had uh, been in a bit of controversy. Unfortunately, uh, some of her leaked photographs and videos were leaked online, which sucks for her. But I, but at least in this, she was able to beat Rhea Ripley and become the new. NXT Women's Champion or UK Women's Champion. Uh, the two girls threw strikes at each other and uh, she locked in a submission, but then Tony reversed it into an ankle lock. Uh, Tony hit a Storm Zero but Rhea kicked out and then Tony reversed the Riptide into another Storm Zero to end up winning the title, which I'm, I'm really happy that um, she did because, like I said before, she's been through a, a rough few months. She got injured. And then her leaked photographs and videos and all that got leaked onto the internet, uh, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, at least now she was able to say fuck, fuck off to all those people now that she's NXT UK Women's Champion. And no one is going to remember those dickheads that leaked her private information. All they're going to know now is that, oh, yeah, Tony Storm, NXT UK Women's Champion. I'm so happy that uh, she is champion. She's been one of my favorites on the roster for quite a while now, especially since she won the Mae Young Classic last year. Um, sky's the limit for that girl, and I really hope that uh, 2019 she just has a fantastic year because, uh, yeah, this is a good start for her for sure. And then we get to the main event match between Pete Dunne and Joe Coffey for the WWE United Kingdom Championship. So, um... Yeah, obviously Pete Dunne was uh, working on the fingers of Joe Coffey, you know, pulling them back and stretching them and all that stuff, which is great. And Joe Coffey 
who is also uh, a great heel at the moment. Like Pete runs and then flips off the steps and uh, hits an Insurugi on him. And then Joe slams uh, Pete Dunn on the entrance ramp. Uh, he locks in the Boston Crab and um, Pete Dunn hits a bit around, but then Coffee kicks out. And these two just have a big slugfest and just have a great match with each other. Uh, Coffee hits a one-armed power bomb from the top rope. Uh, there was a Mount Everest uh, German by Coffee, and then Dunn hits the bitter end, but he moves as he goes for a pin. Uh, and Joe drags Dunn to the top rope and says to him that this is his kingdom. And uh, I don't know what happened, but both men ended up falling off from the top rope. I don't know if that was a botch or something like that, but Dunn then goes for a move from the top rope. And it happens again. Both men fall off the top rope and land into the guardrail. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but if that was a botch, then man, that sucks. To slip up on the top rope twice, that I, I, you'd have to be pissed off with yourself. But that didn't really take away that much from the match. I think it kind of added to it a little bit. Just these two guys who are just bringing it to each other and... You know, both men willing to sacrifice themselves just to become UK champion, which I think is just great. Um, but he, Pete Dunne hit the bitter end again, but Joe Coffey kicked out. Um, but how this all ended, and I'm actually kind of, I was actually kind of shocked that, that, that this is how the match actually ended. Uh, Pete says, you know what, fuck this. He grabs Joe Coffey's fingers and just completely bends them back. It was really hard to watch and uh it just made joe coffee tap out as you would if you had your fingers bent to the back of your hand just ugh. and uh pete dunn uh retains the wwe united kingdom championship uh, he has just been on a hell of a title role like he's been the champion for the last almost two years now i think he just reached 600 days just recently which um for the for, for a wwe title is a fucking huge accomplishment so i reckon at the next show he will drop it to the guy that did come out after the match which ended up being walter who had uh who's developed quite a reputation for himself on the uk indie scene and um just for being a really big intimidating force and he appears and he stares down pete dunn uh, Joe Coffey then tries to run in, but he just cops an absolute big boot by Walter, and that's how we close the show on uh, just seeing what we're, what we're going to see next with uh, probably with Pete Dunne versus Walter for the UK Championship, which I think that match will be insane to see. Uh, I haven't seen much of Walter, but I'm very excited to um, see what he can bring to the table in NXT UK. I think he's going to be a big addition to that brand, which I can't wait to see. So, um, yeah, that was it for NXT UK. This was actually quite quick. Um, my match of the night was the opening match for the NXT UK Tag Team Titles. How I'm going to rate the show, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I thought this was a great way to start the NXT uh, UK brand to get it really going into the new year. Uh, the opening tag match was fucking fantastic. The main event was really good. And it wasn't really a bad moment on this show. It was overall very, very enjoyable. So, um, yeah, make sure to give it a watch if you haven't already. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Comment down below your opinions on NXT UK Blackpool. And if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. You'd be glad you did. Twitter and Instagram's at JackmanLawFerryWood. If you want to check me out there, thank you so much for watching. And I'm out in three, two, one.